Uh, Matatiri is the name of a person, the lead singer. And then Mahotela Queens is the name of the three girls that are singing there. And the band is called Mahonazote Band, which means in English is Jack of All Trades. Yes. Um, when uh, it seems like you've been playing for quite a long time. Yes. Well, in fact, this band, it is a very, very, very oldest band in South Africa. We have created this type of music, which is called Mpakanga in our country. The, the reasons for us to, to make that music, it was through the political situation in our country. When I remember very well, 1955, when the white people uh, divided the blacks to put them in various places. Zulu should live with Zulus, Sutus must be, live with Sutus, Tosa must be Tosa, Shangan, etc. And yet before, these people lived together, mixed together. I remember in Sophia town, we used to have also Chinese people living with us, uh, some of the whites living with us mixed in that one township which was called Sophia Town. When that happened, it was a blow to our hearts. We were very young, you know. We could see our political leaders, the way they, they struggled with the government. And uh, there was no way that we can assist. But one day, we came out with a solution that uh, how about we getting a set of music that people can all share in and share the problems what they have and enjoy with this music because of the problems that they have. That's when we created this music. From that time, a lot of people started to buy our music and everybody enjoyed this music and we had big, 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 big sales by then. Now that proved to us that it means our people can come together and back to normal, though they don't live together like before, but now somewhere they meet because of our music. Because our music was catering for all the black ethnic group that lives in South Africa. Even now, it is still the same thing. Musically, uh, is that kind of mixture of the uh, traditional music with um, uh, kind of modern you know, rock and roll music, Christmas blues? Well, uh, our music, basically, when we started it, we took Marabi, which is a township jazz. And then we took a little bit from Pata Pata. It's also another type of music that we have in South Africa. And we took a little bit from rock and roll and twist, just the rhythm. And then we used electronic instruments to play this music and then after we mixed it when we used this electronic instrument it eventually sounded completely different from all this music so it was now the, the own structure which uh, became very popular to all the, the, the South Africans. What is the uh, meaning of the word Mpatanga? Mpatanga, it's a, you know, in my country, we have a special meal that we, we eat, which is mixed 
from various things that you can cook. You mix a lot of vegetables, and then once it is mixed, it's called mpakanga. Then we eat that. So that's why this music is called mpakanga, because it has, it has a little bit of flavor of that type of music, and that type, and that type, and being put together. And also, really, it's very ordinary people. I beg your pardon? Is that very uh, food for ordinary people, not rich people? Well, yes, since uh, the Western civilization came very strong in our country, a uh, lot of, we find there's a lot of rich people. But uh, Mpakana is a, it's an international food in South Africa for blacks. Because uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money to obtain that. You grow all these vegetables from your garden and you just make food and you eat. Yes. Right. In, uh, in South Africa, it, uh, are there a lot of groups playing this kind of music? Well, at this present moment, there's not, there's not much groups that play this type of music that we are playing because it's because of the promotion. What happened is this. In our country, for many, many years, we never had uh, TV. Now, when TV was introduced, was introduced to our country, nobody had any videos to show locally what we have got. So automatically, all the programs that, are, are, that were played in our TV. It was from America, Americans, uh, Europe, you know. And now, you must remember one thing. Television, it is so strong once it's new to the community. It has, it has changed the, the viewers that, oh, we need to play like Michael Jackson, because they see Michael Jackson now and again, they can't see Matatini, because Matatini hasn't got anything ready. It's only now that a lot of companies are busy filming local products. And now it's changing back, now it's going back to its normal. Yeah, and also, uh, I suppose maybe, you know, those media is uh, owned by the power. Yes. That, you know, about, you know, part of South Africa. That's right. Well. Yes. So then again, it's very difficult. Yes, it's very difficult because if you don't have money, our music, it's only now that it's getting very popular to the European market. But we have been professionals 25 years ago. The only thing is that uh, the white power just said, well, this is just cheap music, just to make money, easy money, and that's it. Until Paul Simon came and made Graceland record with my crew. And they started to realize, ah, that music is very big. Even now, a lot of people are crying for this music. Now it has destroyed the young generation in South Africa because now they don't know this music. It's not easy. It's very difficult, but we have few groups for instance, like Soul Brothers, Abangani, well, that is not enough to, to, to carry for the country, you know. Right, right. You but I didn't know you, your band played with Paul Simon, I didn't know that. My, my band, yes, we played there. Uh, I produced Lady Smith, Black Mambazo. That's, oh, really? Yes, I am, I am the founder and the producer of that group. Oh, really? Yes. All right, I didn't know that. Yes. Well, in fact, in South Africa, I'm one of the biggest producers who has been very successful in musically. I have produced too many groups that are selling very well in the country, also outside South Africa.
Right. From your point of view, the black people in the leading musical figure in South Africa, for instance, guys like uh, Johnny Clegg, has been really successful in France. Yes. And uh, I mean, he's white, you know, white music. Yes. And uh, Paul Sammy is white as well. Yes. And what do you think about this kind of you know, phenomenon? Well, that. It's a, it's a very difficult uh, question, but my personal feeling is that uh, Johnny Clegg, he lives in South Africa. He has been very fond of the black music. And then I can say he's a, he played a very important part to have established our music outside South Africa so that today, when you see Matlatin is here, I can say it's, it's, it's because of Paul Simon and Johnny Clegg to have established this thing to the outside world. That it's not only me, Johnny Clegg, but there is more music there. And there are people like Matlatin. Johnny is a big, big fan of Matlatin. When he was young, Matlatin was hot. So I think uh, it's, it's, it's a very great thing that one of the whites showed the other whites that no people, let's not ignore the fact that these people are existing. These people have got their traditional, which this, this traditional can be accepted throughout the whole world if it can be well looked after and well promoted. So that's my personal view. And, uh, I, I think Martini is about 60 years old or more. No, 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 no. He is now 50, 53. 53? Yes. But uh, and, uh, as well, Martini and Queens are not young. Yes, they are not young because this, this band is the original band. They started this music from their youth up to now. They are in 40s, the girls. And the band are also in 40s. Right. Yes. Right. So you've been, uh, how long have you been playing together? For 26, 27 years. Really? Yes, but professionally, it's 27 years. Before that, we, we, we played together, we, we, we joined uh, together long before that because we were not known you know we were just uh, street, street kids you know playing in the street together with the band until 1964 where we reached a goal that now we get into the professional uh, and, uh, one of the articles i read about uh, says you are the beat in south africa yes that is true well, when the Beatles were very hot in the world, in UK here, and then we were hot, very, very hot in, in South Africa. There was no group who could stand in front of us. We used to play in, in huge crowds. We are the first band in South Africa to have improved the standard of performance, you know. Because in, in, in South Africa, music, we, we treat that as part-time, just to enjoyment, because we are so much unprivileged in a lot of things. Now, when we, when we are not working, then we, we play music for free. We don't make money out of it. But when we took over, we, we taught the people that they should contribute something towards this so that the band can survive and can make more music. Yeah. Because now, the instruments that we're using, they are electrified. Sometimes they break. We need to go and repair them. And if we play for free, we won't be able to repair those instruments. And still, at the same time, people need that music. So we made them to understand that. Then everything started. Now people used to pay now to come to the concerts. You see? Right. And, uh, you know, I know musicians like um, Storm Mabuse. Yes. And also Mala Poets. Yes. Uh, they released a record from, you know, countries outside South Africa. Yes. And uh, I suppose one of the reasons is maybe because what they are singing about, you know, the story kind of heavy. Well, people 
They realize in our country, see in our country it is so difficult. We haven't got the freedom to ourselves to do what we feel we want to do for the community. That is why if you get any chance to go outside and you find yourself that you have you've been privileged to do things that you can't do at home. That's why you find that they release records and they put heavy political weights into it because that is the only way to, to ask for help from outside. People should be aware that, I mean, this is the life that we live in South Africa. It is not normal for humans, you know. It's going to change. The, the, the whole world hasn't got what we, we call discrimination in the books. You'll find it outside Europe uh, sometimes. You find there's, there's, there, there is that discrimination apartheid, but it's not in the books. Now, in, in our country, it's in the books, which you can't do anything with it. So therefore, when you go out, you find such like Sipo Mabuse, they try to do that because they're trying to get help. Maybe sometimes that can help to change the situation in our country. So, you know what, after doing that, they couldn't come back to South Africa anymore? They did, except in Malopez. But they, are, they have not been restricted to, to go back to South Africa. No. Malopez, I think uh, they had some good relation with friends, wherever they were, and then they felt, well, they got children, they made children with some girls here, and then, I mean, they become now the fathers of various children now. I mean, you can't just go and leave your family behind, you know. So some of them have, uh, are made to stay because of that. But Sipo Mabuse is, is, is always in and out, in and out. Right. But it's based in South Africa. Right. And uh, in case of Martin and Mandela Queens, I know uh, two albums. One is Paris Soweto. Soweto Paris Soweto. Yes. Uh, before, the it's called Togozile. Yeah. Yes. And uh, tell me what kind of thing they are singing about. Because some of the songs are singing in Zulu. Yes. And I know one song sent, you know, sung in English, I want to dance, you know, I want to be here, yeah, I want to dance. Yeah. Oh, yes. <coughs> Our music, basically, the lyrics, we, we are not taking sides, especially we are not too much on politics. Because uh, there's one thing that we realize. Uh, our music is a happy music. We want to make people happy. When you are a politician or non-politician, when, when you come back from your hard working day, you listen to our music, it refreshes your, 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 your brain, you know, so that you, you can feel relieved from the hard working of the day. It's a happy songs. We're singing about daily life, you know, simple things that people can live together and then people how to, how to make love, how to propose a girl. But some, they're a little bit heavy. Uh, like for instance, when I pay on Paris Soweto, Gazelle, that song, it is, uh, the lyrics are based on, on a village that has been neglected for many, many years. There was nothing, no taxis, no bus, no shops, and nothing, you know. People used to walk a long way to obtain food. Now, Gazette, we are singing about that village because now, automatically, after so many years, they started now to, to upgrade the village. There's some taxis, shopping complex, train, everything. So we're singing about that to thank the, the city council who thought of upgrading that, uh, that village. And then some, it's about our create, creativity from our music because a lot of people just read about us. They've not seen us live. And then some of the songs we talk about ourselves that how, how strong we can be into the nation with our music. Okay. You see. Uh, say about uh, Rose Hill, 
boycott. Yes. Well, we have not found it so difficult because we are the victims of apartheid. You see, we have not found it difficult. We always move in and out very free. Well, sometimes we meet little problems with some unions. Well, that we, we get it over because we put our case that, look, we don't want to be victimized twice. We've been victims first with our white South Africans and plus you again here. So you must pity us, you know, somewhere when we are here, make us feel comfortable. And uh, whenever Martini Mandela Queen plays, they really wear beautiful uh, costumes. Are they really kind of traditional to the... Yes. Uh, yes, the costumes that they wear, it is basically the, the traditional way of our women dresses in the old days. And uh, this music, it won't look nice if you don't use those costumes. Because this costumes goes with the choreography of the music that we play. So it's made especially for that. And also the dance they do is based on traditional kind of civil dance. No. It's not traditional. It is a a, 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 a modern I mean the township life. That's how the township people does this thing. From Iketo, you know. It's not from the from the rural area, no. It's from the township. Right, right. And uh, these days, a lot of white musicians are picking up in Bakanga. Yes. And, uh, because I was really surprised when I listened to American singers. Well, 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 he was playing in Bakanga. Very well, well, kind of soft arrangement. Yes. And how do you feel about that? Well, we feel very proud to see that now, the outside world, now recognize that we are also, we're having something that we can sort of present ourselves to the outside world if we can get our freedom. We, we, there's a lot of things that we can do. So if people can now come on our side and, and take our music and take it as, as a real music, then we feel very proud about that. But what, there's one little thing that I don't like. Whites are very bad. They, they come and take our music, and then they don't pay back to us. They claim that it is their music, which is wrong. That is the wrong part of it, which I don't like. I mean, we don't mind to exchange culture with them, but it, let, let it be fair, you know. For instance, I'll tell you about one song you, you might know. It's a very popular song, which is recorded Long time ago, in early 40s, it's called Mbube, Wema We. I don't know if you know that song. They say the lounge sleeps tonight, now in English. That song is originally recorded by a group called uh, Solomon Linda and uh, Mbube group in South Africa. When I was very, very, very young, that song was very popular. And then it was taken away. Uh, well, it was re-recorded and they called it Wema Way and automatically the writer now changed. That's very wrong. Yeah, how about, how about uh, Harry Birahonte's album? Because when I listened to it, That's, I, was, I was sure you know, some of the songs belong to you. The, the first cut, Cape Town, it's my song, it's called Kalamazoo. I recorded that album with Harry Pelafonte with my band. I am the guy on Kazankulu who says uh, progress in Kazankulu. If you, re if you can play it and listen to this voice, it's ex exactly the same voice that you get there. So Harry, he is ripping us off as a black brother. He asked me if we could do something together and I said fine. At the end of it, now he claims, to, he takes my music away and, and says that's his music. Oh, really? Now that is a bad thing. I didn't realize that. You see. Uh, yeah. Because they realize that we are under, we are so much oppressed that side, we have no chances of getting outside and to mix with people who can advise us and who can look after our, our music. So that is, 
that is a bad part of it. You see, we're still having a problem to to solve these things. Right, right. And how do you feel about him, for instance, you know, appearing on stage with some Mandela's gig and stuff like that? I was there also. Really? Yes, we, we appeared there also. Didn't you see us? No, I wasn't there actually. I saw a video, you know. Oh. I felt very bad. You know, now a lot of musicians, especially outside, they are too much commercial now. They always want to make money only. What they say with their mouth, it is not what they do, you know. They can come to you saying, yes, we can help you this and this and this and this. But when you look at it, at the end of the day, you find that this guy was just wanting to make money for himself. That is a problem. Yeah. And you said that you uh, found the uh, Black Mamba as well? Yes. Uh, yes. And uh, is there any other uh, kind of very special music from South Africa? I mean, because I know Mububé and Mpakanga. Yes, Those there is. We have Mbube, Mpakanga, and then we have another one which is uh, called uh, I can describe it like a religious music. We have it's also different, you know. And then also we have uh, some of the traditional music what Johnny Clegg is playing, you know. That's real Zulu traditional music with a violin and a guitar and somebody singing, you know. And then we have various music and from the different ethnic groups that we have in South Africa. Every ethnic group has got its own traditional, you know, and that music, we record it also. It's plain, it's plain, it's plain. Uh, can you name uh, maybe one of the uh, top bands for that? For what? For the, the other one of your music. Well, the, the top ones there, I can say, Lady Smith is on the top on the Mbube, and then we have Tawia Matsila on the Sutu, and then we have uh, Amampondo on, on the Kosa side. I think you know Mampondo. Amampondo. Oh, I yes, and then we also have, uh, well, uh, we have Obet Nguben on the Shangan. Shangan side. That's, those are the biggest, but they still have small ones as well on, on the same categories. Yeah. 